I've hired a car. You know what that means? It means I'm going on a road trip down to the Chernobyl irradiated forests of eastern Belarus. I'm going to go and look for Collier. Check up on him. See if he even knows about this pandemic that's sweeping the world. Is he practicing social distancing or not? We shall find out, hopefully. And on the way, I'm going to stop off at a few historical places and, um, yeah, maybe we can learn a thing or two. So join me, if you fancy it, on a road trip across Belarus. Ooh. I'm walking through what was once the village of Khatin. In March of 43, in retaliation for a partisan attack on a German convoy, the fascist invaders came to the village, locked over 180 people into a barn, poured petrol on it and set it on fire. People who tried to escape were machine gunned to death. 75 children died inside that barn along with their parents and grandparents. Afterwards, the village was wiped off the face of the map. The site of every former house in what was Khatin is now represented by these concrete foundations. And inside, we can see the names and the ages of the people who died inside. Albert, 15, Stasia, 12, Dominic, 7, Renia, 6, Tsepa, 4, and Yuzik, 2. Of course, it wasn't just Khatin that suffered such a fate. Over 5,000 villages and settlements in Belarus were wiped off the face of the map, burnt down and destroyed by the Germans under the occupation. By the end of the war, over 2 million Belarusians had been killed. Here are some of the names of the villages. Khatin is, of course, a reminder as though any was needed of just how much Belarus and the Belarusian people have suffered over the centuries at the hands of greater powers. In all my films of the region, we've always talked about the Soviet history. But what we've never really talked about is the Napoleonic history of the region, the great army's invasion and then retreat. And here's a sign, a memorial basically to what happened here in the village of Studentka. Now you history buffs will know, but it says up here from the 26th to the 28th of no November, 1812, the Russian army shelled the retreating Napoleonic army as they crossed the river Berezina. That's right, let's go down now to the village itself and have a look at the river where that took place. Interesting. It was here on the banks of the River Berezina that Napoleon's Grand Armée finally met its watery grave. Harassed and harried all the way from Moscow by Kutuzov's army and the Cossacks. They finally reached the banks of the Berezina here in Belarus. But the ice had melted and the men, the artillery, the horses could not cross. Sappers waded into the icy waters that cold night, constructing pontoons. Napoleon managed to escape in the morning, along with many of his generals. But the Russians, by that time, had caught up and started shelling the encampment. 20,000 Frenchmen died here at the Battle of the Berezina in Studienka. After some 200 years, the name of this little river in Belarus has entered the French language. If a Frenchman wants to say that something is a complete disaster, he will often say, ah ha ha ha, say yes, Berezina. Up here is a giant stork's nest. God knows how much it weighs, but you see these storks nests all over Belarus. You see them in telegraph poles, on chimneys, on top of old village houses. And so let's just take a moment to appreciate what may be the greatest travellers ever, because the stork, the family of storks that are living up there now, will leave this nest at the end of the summer and they will fly down through Europe, across the Mediterranean, over Egypt, Sudan, Kenya, all the way down to Mozambique, where they will rest for the winter. And then in the spring, 
They'll fly all the way back to this very village. They'll come all the way back to that very nest here in Belarus. Amazing, the greatest travelers in the world, the European stork. Guys, it's 7.30 at night. I've been on the road since 11 this morning. You kind of don't realize how big Belarus is when you look at a map because it's surrounded by big neighbors, Russia, Ukraine, Poland, but it's bloody huge. And so at 7.30 at night, I'm not gonna make it to Collier's today. Um, and besides, I've got a little bit of business I wanna take care of here tomorrow. So I'm gonna check into this lovely looking hotel in Korma, if they've got some rooms, about to find out. And uh, yeah, we'll continue tomorrow, but let's go and check into the hotel if we can. The first stage of checking into a provincial hotel has been passed. Oh, the lovely greenness. Don't you just love a bit of Soviet green? I think that people in Belarus are afraid of coronavirus. I have your mask. A little bit afraid. A little bit afraid. You don't fear it, you just have to... Ah, point. Yeah. Right then, guys, number 18. Let's see what 25 Belarusian rubles gets you in the provinces. Oh, gets you a nice lounge with a TV and a sofa. Oh, and it gets you a lovely bedroom with a nice red bed cover. All for 25 Belarusian rubles. I like it. Well, that was good news, wasn't it? That they have a room. And now over there, I see that there's some kind of restaurant. So let's see if we can't have ourselves a little late night meal on a Sunday in the provinces. In old Korma, Karma, whatever it's called. Look at my little lonely car. Here's the old restaurant called the Soj. The Soj is the river that flows through here, through this town, so let's go and check it out. Until midnight. Dun dun dun, what's this place gonna be like? Oh. -ho. I think the old Soj restaurant's closed. Oh, what a pity, oh, what a pity. Well, I'm not going to be having much food in my belly tonight, I don't think. I doubt there's a profusion of restaurants in this town. So if the Soj restaurant's closed, I think that's it. It's looking like another packet of noodles in the provinces. The Doska Pachota, or as I call it, the Wall of Hotties, is how I judge any town, whether it's inhabitable or not. Let's see who we've got here. Any characters on here? Well, straight away there's Andre. Andre looks a little bit guilty, like he's done something he shouldn't have done. Ah, oh, sweet. Let's, uh, oh, well, hello, Diana. I think that's it. I finally found my place in life. Whew. It's called Korma. I didn't expect that, but it's funny how life turns out. Well, inevitably, I've discovered the town's tank, which every town has and here it is whatever it is whichever war it's from i presume the second world war but who knows check it out you tank buffs might know what is it it's big it's a big old soviet tank there you go one that survived the war i wonder what terrible things this did and saw Crikey. Here we have the old Soviet shop called Centralny, which obviously means central, but it seems to be closed. So it looks like I'm not having a packet of noodles in this town either. It's gonna be a hungry night in the provinces. Crikey. Bye bye civilization and safety. And hello, irradiated forest full of wolves, bears, 
Maybe escape psychopaths from the local mental institutes. Who knows? There's no other way across here. I'm stuck in a swamp. Okay. Coronavirus! Yes, please! Coronavirus!